Are you looking to take your astrophotography to the next level? Then filters are a must have. But first, let's talk about the easiest way to attach them to your setup and be able to interchange between them. Hey everyone, it's Tony with Hidden Light Photography. And today we're gonna to be talking about an accessory that is specifically designed to help maximize your image quality. So if you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button. I don't want you to miss out on any valuable information. Now let's jump on in and learn about filter drawers and filter wheels. Filter drawers and filter wheels are accessories that allow quick changing of filters without disturbing your imaging train. They come in different sizes and functionality to allow for compatibility across multiple platforms. But which one is right for you? That question can only be answered by you and ultimately what your goals and preferences are. In order to make the best decision, let's dive into what each is and how they function along with their pros and cons so you can decide what best fits your hardware, goals, and preferences. Let's start with filter drawers. Filter drawers are a housing that fits a single filter at a time. They allow for quick changing of filters by having the filter inserted into a drawer that pulls out. You'll simply pull out the drawer, change your filter, and then reinsert the drawer. The drawer can either accept mounted filters, which are threaded, or unmounted filters, which just rest in the slot. So make sure you know what the mounting type is for your filter so you get a filter drawer that accepts the correct type of filter. The most common filter sizes you'll find are two inch and one and a quarter inch. So be sure to pay attention to what filter size you're using as this will matter when you buy your filter drawer. The filter drawer will thread into your imaging train, so you need to make sure you get one that will fit the back focus needs of your telescope. You'll need to pay attention to the back focus consumption each filter drawer uses that you're looking at, so you can choose one that works with your setup. For example, the ZWO filter drawer that I have uses 21 millimeters of back focus, and my Star Arizona filter drawer uses 17 and a half millimeters. Of course, if you find one that uses less back focus than you're looking for, you can always add spacers in order to increase the back focus. If you need help with back focus, check out my videos going over back focus, which I'll have links to in the description of this video. Now let's talk about filter wheels. Filter wheels, similarly to filter drawers, allow for quick filter changes without disturbing your imaging train and also come in the common filter sizes of two inch or one and a quarter inch filters. So you'll need to know which filter size you're using as well as if you're using mounted or unmounted filters. There are two main differences between filter wheels and filter drawers. Filter wheels house multiple filters and have different sizes that will hold different numbers of filters such as a five filter wheel, seven filter wheel, and eight filter wheel. Also, filter wheels have a manual option as well as an electronic automatic option which can be controlled by your imaging software such as Nina. Using an electronic filter wheel coupled with your imaging software brings you a step closer to fully automating your imaging session as you can choose which filter you want for your target and the software will select that filter for you without needing to do it yourself. Keep in mind, using an electronic filter wheel does require having an available USB port to plug into your computer so your computer can communicate and control your filter wheel. The electronic version of a filter wheel does come in handy in an example of imaging a galaxy which utilizes broadband filters and then slewing to a nebula to image a narrowband within the same imaging session. The software will automatically switch from a broadband filter to a narrowband filter of your choosing by telling the software which filter slot each desired filter is located in without needing to intervene manually. Of course, just like the filter drawer, you'll need to make sure to take back focus into consideration and pay attention to the back focus consumption of each filter wheel you're looking at. One other thing to consider with a filter wheel is some allow you to have a direct camera attachment or non-direct camera attachment. 
Direct camera attachment means you're removing the flange from the camera and bolting the filter wheel directly to the camera. If you utilize this connection method, keep in mind that your native back focus will change since you're removing the camera's flange. Again, if you need help with back focus, check out my two back focus videos, which I'll have links to in the description of this video. All in all, there's no right or wrong answer to which filter housing method you choose, whether it be filter drawer or filter wheel. Consider what your goals are, what will work for your setup, and choose what fits your needs and hardware capabilities the best. Personally, I go for integration time, so for me, a filter drawer is the most sound option because I'm not switching between filters within an imaging session. Doing a filter drawer also saved money on my setup as filter drawers are significantly cheaper than their filter wheel counterparts. If you're planning on switching filters multiple times within an imaging session and your after complete automation, then the filter wheel might be the best choice for your goals as long as the filter wheel works with your hardware capabilities and requirements. So I hope that you found this useful. If you did, do me a favor, that channel icon that just popped up, hit that channel icon and subscribe and then throw a comment in the comment section. What questions do you have? Are you currently using a filter wheel or filter drawer? And then check out that next video. Until the next time, clear skies.